Luke chapter 6 verse 38 reads, Give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. When you give to God, your gifts commit God with the opportunity to bless you, to keep his promises and to give you more than enough. By your faithful and consistent obedience in giving, you set in motion God's principles of biblical economics. Your gifts unleash God's power in several areas of your life. We do not give money because God is in need. Our God is not poor. He made everything with the word. He has a limitless supply of resources. He has no needs. Even if he did, he will not come to us with it, according to Psalm chapter 50, verse 12 to 15. What God wants from us is an offering of thanksgiving for what he has done for us. He does not need our money. He just needs us to prosper through the principle of giving. Giving brings us harvest. When God wanted to redeem man, he gave his son because he knew he would receive sons and daughters in return. John chapter 3 verse 16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that who Ever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God's actions show that giving is the first step towards abundance in life. He gave his son in exchange for us. He received many sons and daughters at the cost of his son. To receive, it is a must that you give. In 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 4, Solomon gave a great sacrifice and he received much more than his heart desired. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 24 to 27, Hannah gave Samuel to God and she received sons and daughters after being called bearing. In John chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, the young man with two fishes and five loaves of bread gave his lunch to Jesus and got 12 baskets of remnants in return. There is always a reward anytime you stretch out your hand to give. When you are a cheerful giver, God gives and blesses you, and he gives you back many blessings out of his abundance. There are different types of giving. When you talk about giving, it is not only what you give in church. Giving is giving to your neighbors in need, giving to the society, your family, your friends, as their need arises. You can give of your talent, your time, your strength, money, advice, properties, your wisdom, etc. The Bible principle of giving in church are giving as the tithe, the offering, first fruit, seed offering, vows, blessings to the underprivileged, project giving. This kind of givings are not by force. If you believe and have faith that they will work for you and bring you increase, they will work. Try this principle, test it, and see for yourself. Some of us wonder in our hearts why God is giving us, why God is asking us to give when we barely have enough to sustain ourselves. The fact is that you cannot receive if you do not give. You will only be operating under the provision of grace. Sacrificial giving can be hard, especially when we find ourselves in tough financial situations. Why does God seem to value our giving more than we have when we have less to give? The giving that does not cost you anything does not impress God. You can check out the story of the widow's might in Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. God also knows when we are pressed for a miracle. He knows what is best for us and what we need to do to open the channels of blessings. So he stirs up our hearts to give. God does not need our money or our things. What he needs is us. And the process of giving blessings us and changes us as well as brings him glory. Our giving changes our life. Giving helps us to grow and be who God has called us to be. Abraham was willing to give his only son after God asked him to. And that experience probably helped Prepare him to be the man of faith that he was. When you have a relationship with God, you will understand how his principles work. 
Abraham knew this and was in total obedience. You do not have value when you only store up riches without sharing. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 to 21 says, Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. It is important to focus on what is eternally important instead of the temporal things of this world. Our giving brings glory to God. God sees beyond our giving. He knows the effect and the blessings the giving will bring to the recipient. The ripple effects of our giving are beyond what we can envisage. The ripple effects of one act of obedience will continue to go around. God can use one act of that obedience to bless many different people. God wants us to trust him when he asks us to do things that are uncomfortable or that seem unnatural. He can do far more with our small act of giving than we ever thought was possible. He gets all the glory in the end. Our giving blesses us. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 reads, Give away your life, you will find life giving back, but not merely giving back, giving back with bonus and blessings. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. The spiritual law God has put in place is that when we give, we are in turn blessed, both spiritually, physically, and otherwise, God's principles of giving is not to take from us, but rather to bless us. God can stir our hearts to give in a way that does not make sense to us. Giving is supposed to be a spirit thing, a spirit-driven thing in which the spirit moves in your heart and you listen to him and obey as he directs. God's hand is always moved to bless his people through giving. Givers are always commensurately rewarded according to their giving. Hence, givers never lack. People who do not know this will continue to suffer in poverty, while those who understand the principles of giving enjoy God's blessings. Giving opens doors for heavenly blessings. That is why Luke chapter 6 verse 38 reads, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measures, blessed, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over. Shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you met, Wither, it shall be measured to you again. Nigeria is a blessed nation filled with both human and material sources, including oil and other mineral deposits yet untapped, which abound in tremendous quantity. Nigerians should not have any reason to complain of lack. Unfortunately, people are suffering in Nigeria because they do not understand the principle of how to move God's hands to bless them. If you give, you will be given and be mightily blessed. But if you do not give, do not expect to be given and there will be no blessings for you. Genesis chapter 22. In it, God blessed Abraham in all things because in obedience to God's instruction, he offered his only son, Isaac for a burnt offering. Abraham took his son Isaac to the place of sacrifice. Abraham's obedience was God's test for him. His obedience made God bless him beyond measures. God swore by himself to bless Abraham. This shows the seriousness of God and what he attaches to obedience. God blessed Abraham in all things as the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 24. The great number of burnt offering King Solomon offered provoked God to tell him to make a request of what he would do for him. Solomon asked for wisdom to enable him judge and guide the Israelites aright. This request pleased God that he gave him wisdom, wealth, and honor. In verse 12 and 13, God answered him in this manner. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. 13. I have also given thee that which thou hast 